Hey, everybody, you are listening to 19 Cats and Counting. If you are a cat parent, you know how hard it is to tell when cats are in pain or unhappy. And we are talking to two ladies today who work in in an entire, their whole goal is to make sure that we know how our cats are feeling. And they literally saved one of my cat's lives. And I will tell you all about it when we come back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to 19 Cats and Counting. I am your co-host, Linda Hall. Rita Reimers, our hostess, are you with us? I'm here with my 20 cats now. We're back up to 20. That's my limit. I I never go over 20. I am so excited to talk to these next people because we've been testing their wonderful application for a while, especially you, Linda. And yeah, I was kind of, I know, uh, yeah, well, and it, and it literally helped save one of your cat's lives, like you said. So let's introduce Sylvester AI and we have Sajna and Meech here to tell us all about what it is they're working on. Who wants to take the lead ladies? Sure. I'd be happy to. Hi, this is Mish. I'm uh, super grateful to be here and, and thank you for helping us share our story. And uh, yeah, it's it's been an exciting journey. Um, Sylvester AI is a company that builds uh, artificial intelligence products to help animals. And our first product is Tably, which helps cats and helps cats communicate. Uh, as, as we all know, cats are great at hiding their pain. Um, they're both predator and prey. And so as prey, it's vulnerable for them to express their pain. So we're, um, our app helps demystify Um, how cats are doing so that cat owners can be more proactive with getting um, the help that they need uh, sooner. I'll tell you, working with Rita, that is one of the things that I think I learned first is that cats hide their pain. And, you know, we had a pet sitting company and people would, you know, the sitter would come and see the cat and the sitter would come for even a second visit that day. And the cat, how many times Rita was the cat laying near death at the toilet behind the toilet because it had a UTI that nobody caught until it was too late. And we, you know, well, I actually, I just had a cat pass away from kidney issues and I can't help but think he was only six. Um, if I had had this tool, I I maybe could have saved his life. Yes. Yeah. So what prompted you to, uh, choose to do this with cats first? Are you guys avid cat lovers or what, what prompted that? Yeah, so Sylvester AI is a joint venture with AltaML and Bargy Holdings, mm-hmm. and AltaML builds and commercializes machine learning um, into uh, products, and Bargy has a nonprofit, Cat Healthy, uh, which was involved in the beginning with helping us gather and label our data, and um, yeah, I think Cat Healthy has been around for seven or eight years, helping vets with cat protocols and Love things it. like that. So uh, they wanted to know if machine learning could be used to help cats. And so we uh, went on this journey together and, and it's led us to this, which we're super excited to talk about. How did you oh. test it? How did you test it on your own cats? Or I know Linda was one of the volunteer testers. Did you just have a lot of volunteers? Yeah, so initially um, we, uh, when we built the model out, our machine learning developer, after looking at hundreds of images of cats, uh, decided he needed a cat in his life. So he adopted, <laughs> he adopted the rescue Hobbs and Hobbs was a great research assistant, um, sat and posed for pictures. And um, one day our ML developer Harsh noticed that Hobbs was not happy. Uh, and, and after a couple of days of presenting as not happy when he was previously consistently happy, decided to take him to the vet mm-hmm. and the vet found that Hobbs had ear mites. And so this was something that was an exciting finding for our team. Sure, because, sure. Well, and if you think about it with a new cat owner, so this was um, Harsh's first pet, like what are the chances of, of a new cat owner or even an experienced cat owner being able to detect ear mites early? And so um, that, that was our moment where we thought, oh my gosh, this can like really um, be beneficial because uh-huh. both times cat owners don't detect ear mites until they're visibly distressed, really scratching at their ears. And that black <laughs> stuff in their ears. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And then well, after getting treatment, uh, Hobbs was happy again. Oh, that's, I, I ran around taking pictures and I, um, recently integrated, um, my daughter, 
my son-in-law passed away last August from COVID. So my daughter came back home because every 30 year old wants to live with their mother and uh, brought her four cats. So we had to integrate my seven with her four. And it was kind of hairy for a minute there. So I ran around taking, you know, is everybody happy? Is everybody happy? Is everybody... And kismet, I have had kismet probably about four years now. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I, I got her from North Carolina because Rita was full and felt that someone needed to adopt him <laughs> because um, he was FIV positive and people, there's a lot of misunderstandings about FIV and, you know, so he, nobody wanted him. They wanted a healthy cat. So I got him and he's, he's the best cat on the planet. He's just, don't anybody, oh, Galway's behind me. Don't tell Galway, but Kismet's my favorite cat, but um, I know, right? Did he hear me? No, he's still <laughs> sleeping. I'm good. Okay. So, um, and I take a picture and he was unhappy and I thought, okay, because you, you put a warning up and said, you know, might be miffed at this item or how you said it, but you know, it's, it's over time. So, and then I take a picture of other cats and they're happy. And then I take a picture of Kismet. Kismet wasn't happy. And I said, his one's going to the vet. I, it, it was like midnight when I took like the third picture and he was right behind me on this chair, curled up, purring, happy. I'm petting him. I'm thinking, oh, he's going to be happy now. One well, happy. So I, I got him into the vet. We had a snowstorm that morning and my husband's oh, like, you are not driving Napoleon, take this cat to the vet. And I'm like, no, there's something wrong. And with FIV, their immunity is low. So molehills can become mountains. They can't fight things off. So I'm like, no, this cat. So God bless my husband. He takes the cat to the vet in the snowstorm 25 minutes away. And uh, yeah, he was, he had some inflammation um, in his blood work. It was showing there was some inflammation in there, which is probably causing a lot of pain. And um, he was dehydrated. They gave him sub-Q fluids and they put him on um, a, an anti-inflammatory and it took a couple of days and then he was happy again. And I was just the feeling of, you know, like, oh, he's okay. It's going to be okay. I know she couldn't wait to tell you guys. I was just like in tears. I'm sending an email <laughs> to Sasha and me. She goes, my cat. And I was just bawling because yeah, I wouldn't have caught it. And I guess, you know, we don't know what caused the inflammation, but it was probably very painful and I had no clue. And I'm pretty into, especially kids, cause we're together a lot. You know, there are a few of my cats that are a little more on me and I would never have known ever. So, and initially you were looking at, um, just sending it out for vets offices. And so what, what Sajna, what is the, what is the benefit to the vets? What is the point of that? Yeah. So for, for vets, our application is actually for a remote patient monitoring. So after a cat goes in for say a dental procedure, the vet can say, you know, for seven days, three times a day, I want you to monitor the cat with the app and track its recovery. And then the amazing thing is that the vet actually has that on-demand insight into their recovery journey as well. We hear from a lot of vets that after a patient leaves the office, they don't really know how they're doing. They might call, they get sent a voicemail, the voicemail doesn't get returned, and they really care about that feedback to make sure that, you know, the cat has actually recovered well after a procedure. Mm -hmm. And so that's really um, the application side for the vets. And then, of course, I mean, your story is amazing. We, we got really excited with Harsha's story because he was a new cat parent. We thought to ourselves, this is an amazing educational tool for new cat parents. But what's really yes. special about your story is you've, you have so many cats, you've been a cat liver for so many years, but it still was able to provide you with some benefit as well. So that was yes. really, really special for us. Yes. It, it, it just, you know, it just blew me away. I don't know if, I don't know if what again caught in time, they get too dehydrated organs start shutting down. And like Mish said, you know, they, that's, I think that's the first thing I ever learned from Rita cats hide signs of illnesses. That's mm -hmm. a really yeah. big thing. You if just they, don't know. If they go three days without eating, they get fatty liver disease. And the thing is you would have seen him get sick, but with his uh, HIV, the, yeah, uh, you FIV, know, but it's I'm similar sorry. to HIV in humans, I but yeah, so FIV, that, I know, FIV. I know it is. That's how it's been explained to me though, is that with immunity, it's very similar to yeah. HIV, but yeah, yes. Yeah. It, it probably very well could have been too late, you know, just like, you know, when you found Sonny with the kidney, by the time you found he was in stage four, or was he three at that point? And then, you know, it was just three on the way to four and it wasn't but a week later, he went into stage four yeah, yeah. and I had to make the decision, you know, six years old really shouldn't be dying of uh, kidney issues. But, um, 
what was I going to, I was just going to ask you something and I'm sure that Mark will have to yeah. put this out while I'm thinking. Right. <laughs> It'll come to you. It'll come to you. I, I, I like come to oh, I know. I know what it was. How is it the software? What is the software used to determine if a cat looks happy or unhappy? Did you want to take this? Either of you. I can if you want. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. So we, like Mish mentioned, we are, um, you know, Alta ML is an artificial intelligence company. And so we have a really a lot of talented data scientists on our team that are much more well-versed in the, the technical part of AI than I am. Mm -hmm. um, but we use a, a um, technology called computer vision, which is basically enabling a computer to see in the same way a human has vision. Mm -hmm. And there's a validated medical study called the feline grimace scale. I'm not sure if you two are, are familiar with it, but- I, I, uh, I wasn't yes. until- this project came the, along, but I am the now. first time we spoke to you. We both, yes, exactly. So yeah, it's a it's a study that you know the way if a human's in pain, it's pretty obvious they're crinkling their nose and scrunching their eyes and maybe hunching their body position. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, cats actually show very subtle facial cues to show that they're unwell. Um, so ear position, eye position, muzzle position. There's five different facial cues. So we trained a model to actually read those cues off of a photo. Wow. That's, That's amazing. amazing. It's just yeah. amazing. I know we could have used this during uh, when we were running just for cats pet sitting. We oh, could no have used kidding. something like that. Every pet sitter should have this. And, and I, I agree. We talked about <laughs> this. Um, uh, Rita just, just took in another cat. She got down to 19 and this cat showed up on her back. Day and she said, Linda, don't let me do 20. Don't let me go back up to 20. And then she said, I'm not taking a cat unless it shows up at my door. <laughs> Be careful what you say because fake so we, said, oh, yes. yeah. So his name is Dexter because he was on the deck. D -E -C -K and -S -T -E -R. Um, uh -huh, yes, D E C K. And uh, so she took him to get neutered. And I said, you know, they often do not send pain pills home with that after that. And I said, he, my how vet do did. you know? Yeah, but they often don't. And I'm like, how do you know if they're in pain or not? How do you know if they need the pain pill or your um, lovey got a cancer cut off of his leg? And so you bring home these pain pills, but you think, does he need it? Is he better now? Wait, is he hurting? Should Because, you know, we humans occasionally do not go four hours or go three and a half or whatever, push it forward a little bit if you're really hurting, you know, should we be giving this cat the medicine or is the cat out of pain and I'm still giving him the medicine because there's still some in the bottle and that's what I was told to do. Well, and he has so. four new lumps. So is he in pain now because of those? Exactly. He's yes. going back to the vet next Monday. And I, I think one of the biggest things we've talked about, every pet parent who has ever had to put down a pet knows that feeling. And I don't care if you are Rita Reimers, who's been working with cats for 20 years and has a million, okay, 20 of them. Sometimes it feels like a million, right? And uh, I, yeah. I don't care when that time comes to put that animal down, you question yourself. Did I wait too long? Did I not wait long enough? Am I cheating you out of something? Uh, my latte, who I adored, she was not a cat's cat. She was a people's cat. And she was, we call her nurse latte. Anytime anybody gets sick, she laid on you. Well, she got a cancerous tumor. And I said, they offered to euthanize her. And I said, as long as she's comfortable. So then we notice she's not going up the stairs anymore. And she's not sitting <laughs> on the back of the couch. She can still get on the couch. And so, you know, you keep bargaining. She's not acting like she's in pain. So that thing grew so big. It was probably the size of her head, but I... I didn't want to cheat her, but yet I didn't want her to suffer. And I loved her and I didn't want to lose her. So finally, one day I find her under the table hiding. And that's, you know, that's what cats do when they're ready to die. And so I'm calling around, trying to find a vet who can get her in to put her out of her misery right now. And then I'm sitting in the office crying, going, I waited too long. I'm so sorry. You know? Every pet this, parent has been this, through that. Yes, Every pet yes, parent. yes. Even with Sonny, you know, you knew he was stage four kidney. The vet was telling you, you tried everything, you'd done everything, but you were texting going, am I doing the right thing, Linda? I mean, that's just well, what everyone Even with. with the vet, when he sent me home with him a week before, because he had stayed in the vet for that's office for five days. He was hot. He acted happy. He looked happy. I'm sure the software would have said he was happy. And my vet said, I wouldn't put him down right now if you asked me to. But yet a week later, he was, is a totally different yeah, situation. 
But um, you still question. It doesn't matter what happens. I you're going to question. So what a wonderful thing to take this photo. You just hold it at the cat and press the button and it takes a bunch of photos and it tells you whether or not your cat's content. And if you are consistently getting this message that your cat is unhappy, you, you feel better about your decision making. It gives you that peace of mind knowing that, right. that uh, it takes that question mark out. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not, this wasn't a selfish decision. I didn't rush too far. The cat wanted this. I, and we teach when we do behavior sessions, we often talk about body language and um, we get a lot of cats, you know, when they're integrating a cat and, you know, the, the dominant cat's got to prove himself and whatever. And so they're fighting and the parents aren't sure if this is fighting or, cat thing that needs to be and they'll send us videos we'll go okay look here tails up the ears are up the head's forward so he's curious you know these things we know about but I'm telling you there were no signs that I could have picked up on they must be so subtle there was nothing I could have picked up look at my Abby my Abby suddenly died one night she was 14 uh long story short I I I had an autopsy done because I couldn't figure out she had cancer I never knew I never knew. Anyway, we have to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and talk about more of the positive side of Sylvester AI. And we're back with 19 Cats and Counting. And we're talking with two awesome people that work with work for Sylvester AI, Mish and Sajna, telling us all about this wonderful software to help us decide, are our cats really happy? You know, one of the things I was, when we ran the pet sitting business, our pet sitters had to take a minimum of, I don't remember how many pictures through the visit to send to the parents. At least three. Yeah. It gives you great comfort, you know, and I know Rita and I would be at some business event and she'd be like, my sitter hasn't sent me pictures yet. And then she'd get the pictures and she's overjoyed. So like Sonny stayed in the hospital for a week. Yeah. Imagine if he texted you a screenshot every day that said your cat was content. How much that better make you me feel, feel about better, your cat being there? Sure. Yeah. I know yeah. he was getting spoiled. All of the staff there f- kind of fell in love with him. But uh, yeah, that would be an awesome tool. How many veterinarians are testing this for you right now? Mish? Or Saj and I can answer. Yeah, that. We, no? oh, okay. That's where Saj is had about, We had about, um, about 30 different vets tested uh-huh. out during our prototype phase. So yeah, that that's really... With, with through our vet testing is how we came up with all of the, these different use cases and the way it mm-hmm. can help animals. Like similar to the um, assistance with end of life decision-making, um, a vet kind of reached out to me and she said, you know, we don't have a ton of post-op patients. We don't do a ton of cat surgeries, but what we do really struggle with is helping people, you know, assisting people in making that decision. And right. the really unique thing about cats is because they're so great at hiding their pain, it kind of leads to this lack of proactive care because they're not, you know, as visibly in need as say a dog might be. And so because of that, a lot of cat parents don't get to build the same relationship um, as a dog parent with their vet. So when it Mm -hmm. comes time to have that conversation, there's kind of this added layer of complexity because you might not know the cat for 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. So it it can be really um, quite difficult. We also, one of our Um, prototype vets had, um, she worked with the uh, animal abuse team for um, one of our local police units. Uh And she mentioned to us that this could be a really helpful tool for, you know, if they get into um, a house with like a, a, what they call a hoarder house. And, you know, maybe that person has 60 Mm -hmm. cats in that house and none of them have been cared for well. Well, one, these police teams aren't trained um, to, in, in certain jurisdictions, depends, but these police police teams might, might not be trained with, you know, how to identify feline welfare or canine welfare. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, they can't take all of the 60 cats out at once. They do right. have to prioritize who's going to a shelter, who's going to a vet clinic, who can stay for a day while we get the other animals, you know, to safety. Um, and so, yeah, she kind of brought up, wow, this could be a great tool to help with that as well. So oh, that was something that really exciting that came out of our definitely. Uh, testing period. Yeah. Well, you remember- Huh. I was just going to remember the bad experience I had with end of life decision with my sweet pea. You weren't working for me yet, but I told you about oh. it. A uh, local veterinarian here who, um, my mom runs the Humane Society of Lancaster, South Carolina. So my mom knew these veterinarians very well. I took my, my cats there and my sweet pea, um, she was, I think 16 at the time. And the vet there, I won't name his name, 
he told me it was time to put her down. No, there wasn't. No, it wasn't. I knew it wasn't because I know that cat. Right. And he screamed at me that I wait too long. I mean, he just laid it. He just tore me a new one. So I picked up my cat. I said, thank you very much. I left. I found a new vet. And that vet said, no, it's not time yet. Just because she's 16 doesn't mean it's time to put her down. And she lived for another uh, year and a half before she actually became mm-hmm. sick and I had to make the decision. So I think having that tool would take a lot of the ambiguity out of it as well. You know, that veterinarian either could have backed up his assessment. This is why I think that or said, no, you're right. She's still pretty happy. So it's not time. Yeah. Yet. My daughter, Cassie, is a... Um caseworker for uh, child and family services in Lucas County here in Ohio and Ohio just passed a bill that I'm very excited about HR 33. I think it was where if you go in and are removing children from an abusive home, you have to report on the pets as well. I love that. You know, an abuser that will abuse their kids is probably kicking the dog, right? You know? And so, yeah. How do you know? How do you know if the, if, if the animal's okay or not? And I thought, wow, all the social workers in Ohio need this app so they can go, yes, one upset cat. We need to get her out of here. She's, you know, I think she's been hurt because yeah, you just don't know. But the applications for this are just huge. Just in knowing that your cat's content and, you know, and as you say, they're not content all the time. Um, I told you before we took a picture of Galway who's behind me was consistently happy. He's one of those grumpy cats. He just always looks (laughs) What is that called resting blank face? Yeah, he's got that. And um, so I'm taking pictures and he's happy and he's happy. And, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm testing this thing out. So my husband goes to get into bed and moves the cat, which you don't move cats, but you know, I said, why are you, you don't move the cat? And he said, I like in the bed. <laughs> so he moved the cat and I saw so I immediately took a picture and yeah, not happy, unhappy, not happy. So, yeah. you're, so you're rolling this out to veterinarians first, but then it's going to be available for private use for individuals like me as well. Is that correct? Yeah, we actually have. Uh, so based on, on your story, the kismet story you told us, because we had two pathways, we could go direct to cat owners or that um, what we found there was people who were using the app, it was more event driven. So, uh, you know, after surgery, all of these types of things. Yeah. So that's where we changed our direction and started focusing on the vet path. Mm-hmm. But after the kismet story, we thought, you know, it'd be a shame for people to not have access to this regardless. So we did uh, create a um, direct to consumer version of the app and it is available in the app store under the name Tably. So the app is called Tably, keeping tabs on your cat with Tably. That's good. I love it. So so, uh, now it's, uh, you know, for free, you can um, capture an image of your cat and get the result. And um, that's uh, a contribution that Kismet made. Oh, you don't know how happy I that made that. me too, because Rita will tell you, I'm on the phone going, they can't just give this to vets. We need this. Are they going to shut this off? Cause I, you know, I'm using the prototype. Like, are they going to shut this off and take it away from me? They can't take it away from me. <laughs> the, the one thing I, I have to add though, is that it is available on iOS. So if you have an Apple iPhone, uh, we okay. are looking at getting the Android um, built as okay. quickly as possible. Okay, great. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. So that everybody, I don't know why people don't use Apple, but anyway, I'm, so I'm an iPhone girl, but yeah. Uh, yeah. People just, like the, what they like, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. But yeah, the, the ability, I mean, it's just so huge. We talk a lot about, you know, communication and learning, and we try really hard to teach people all the things that, you know, if you're slow blinky eyes means I love you. And I said, you know, it's, it's cracking a code, like a, a, I liken it often to a nonverbal autistic child and what a parent will go to, to be able to communicate with that child, um, you know, expensive soundboards and, and sign language and whatever, just, I've got to connect with my child. And most cat owners are living with the feline version of a nonverbal autistic child until you know all the secrets between body language. But the stuff that you are picking up on your app is stuff that we just don't see. Well, and we don't know what else to, because the more the app gets used, the better and the smarter it gets. Sure. And what if yes. we could detect early kidney disease or diabetes, or, you know, maybe there's something that presents in the face or the body that um, the machine learning can pick up on. Yes, so that's exactly. one of the things that we're really excited about. Yeah. So, Sonny yeah. actually had diabetes and that's what led to the kidney issues because yeah. I didn't catch the diabetes. He didn't have the classic symptoms. Um, so yes, that would have been a wonderful tool to help 
prolonged mm-hmm. Sonny's life past age six. Um, so how are veterinarians uh, able to, or are they able to purchase this yet? Or is it not quite rolled out to them? Yeah, if they go on our website, Mm sylvester.ai, they are able to uh, book a demo with me. So we run them through the tool, talk about all the benefits and the way it can save the clinic's time. Um, So yeah, that's really the way that they can get in touch with us. It is sylvester.ai. There's no .com in there. Sometimes that can confuse people. (laughs) Yes, Um, yes. But yeah. I will Uh definitely tell my veterinarian about about that and ask him if he's interested. That's yeah, um, me they, too. Right now they have a heavy dog practice and I'm after them. Cause I walk in and I'm like, you don't take cats to magazine. You have dogster strike number one. There's no cat pictures in the waiting room and there's no cat pictures in the individual uh, treatment rooms either. Uh-huh. We have to fix all that. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. And yeah, you know, I've, I've got a dog, I've got a chihuahua, which actually I tried to fool your app. Oh yeah, picture that's of my right. dog, and it said, "This is not a cat." <laughs> <laughs> like, Will you be good. going you're in the good. dog direction soon? Is that the next frontier? We get that question a lot, and uh, the reason that we aren't or aren't at the moment is because of the variance in the breeds of dogs. Sure. So we need training data. We would need training data for each breed, whereas cats, there's less variance. That's so true. one right. thing I should mention is our cat, our app is trained on. Um, on adult cats, so not kittens yet. And then certain breeds where their, um, their, say their ears are modified like a Scottish fold or their muzzle is kind of smushed in like a Persian, our app isn't as accurate because we don't have the- Of course. On that. Uh Uh, But with dogs, you know, a Chihuahua versus a Great Dane versus- That's uh, a big difference, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Yes. Well, I think, I think it was more emergent because like I said, if my dog is hurt, my dog will let me know. My dog will limp. He will favor his paw. She, excuse me, poor dog's going to get offended because I keep calling her him and, um, and she'll whine and she'll whimper and she'll carry on, you know, but like I said, Kismet was right here at my back as I was taking my makeup off at midnight and purring up a storm. And we were, we were doing the nuzzle to nuzzle face. And I was just, we were having a high old time. And I thought, surely, surely this will show he's happy. Yeah, that, that's didn't. how they prevent themselves from getting eaten as prey is by pretending they're yeah. well. Even the purr, the purr doesn't mean they're well either. A lot of time they'll purr again to, to fool those that are hunting for them uh, into thinking they're okay. It's also, yeah. um, it also is self-soothing. It helps them heal. Like, like we've talked about um, when cats purr, it's in the same megahertz as bones healing. So it will help you if you're by a purring cat if you've got a broken bone and it helps them too to try to get well but you know as you know they sometimes need more than that to get well yeah 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 i don't know if that inflammation what that would have led to with kizzy obviously dehydration it's not good and and he's so and with any cat i would have freaked out but i'm so cautious of him because of his immunity we've not really had any problems other than he tends to lose teeth i think he has four left but uh he smiles like elvis oh ring hey these people help save your life. Aww. Kismet, say hi and thank you. To- I'm actually going to cry. To Sajna and Mish. <laughs> yes. yes you're I think now. right now he's not happy being on camera. Right. He's not, yeah. There oh, goes. Thank you. You took my ear out. Yep. Yep. Yeah. He's probably only on the back of the chair. I don't know. We'll see. But yes, I, uh, uh, yeah, he's yeah. gone. He's like, Given that he's got this. health issues, it's more imperative to catch it early so he doesn't stress. Oh yeah. I was cause a yeah. flare up for him. Yeah. I stopped everything. Fortunately, my vets have an app. So I, at midnight, I don't have to wait till they open I'm like, next available, you know, <laughs> I think mean, yeah. it was a Friday night. So he got in Monday at 9am and yeah, I'm like, I, you couldn't tell. And then they asked for a reason on the app while you're bringing him in. And I'm like, because the app said he wasn't happy. So I just said, <laughs> I have reason to believe he might be in pain and I need to get him checked out. Well, hopefully soon you'll be able to say that and the veterinarians will recognize oh, what that is. Once yes, it's full, yes. Widespread available. Um, yes. Is there anything about the app or its discovery or its potential usage that we haven't covered me since Sanja? Yeah, one of the things that we learned from, uh, we had a product testing group direct with cat owners and one of the cats was 16 years old, um, was consistently presenting as not, uh, not 
happy. And so went to the vet um, and the cat had arthritis and was put on pain medication. And then afterward was presenting as happy. And so because they hide their pain, you don't know. So how many cats and cats, I think they can have arthritis as young as nine Mm -hmm. even. So, you know, how long has, have a lot of these cats been suffering and in pain? Oh, sure. um, You know, pain medication can be used to keep them comfortable. Also, people were curious about uh, CBD. So the cannabis products Mm -hmm. and um, the efficacy of that. Uh, So that's uh, an interesting angle where um, we had somebody in our product testing group who was using CBD products on their cat and, and got confident information that it was helpful. Uh, so yeah, we see nice. this as really helping with um, bringing an awareness about the need, need for pain management mm-hmm. and also to help, uh, like you had mentioned, you know, with humans, we have different pain thresholds and maybe I need that pain pill, you know, a half hour earlier. And this is right. something mm-hmm. that can help um, give that information. Exactly. Um, yeah. And plus you don't want to give these medications if they don't need them either. Well, you yes, don't over medicate yeah. your cats or dogs either. Um, yeah. Rita and I've had this conversation quite because we've talked about the app. It's so we talk about you so much. If your ears aren't constantly ringing, ladies, there's something <laughs> you should get your ears checked. As we're talking about all the time, and I said, you know, mentioning arthritis, I have arthritis in my fingers. You young I pups do don't know anything about that, but Rita and I do, and it hurts. Yeah. It's un- very uncomfortable, and I have neuropathy in my feet from MS, and so there are nights when I just you know, need to pop an approximate sodium or something. And I said, you know, how do we know what they're, yeah, that they're not going through this, that they didn't hurt their leg when they jumped down and yeah, it'll heal, but they're uncomfortable and and could use some help. Nobody wants their precious babies suffering. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. And the fact that, you know, find out that you can make them happier and give them this, but then, yeah, if it's something serious and they need to see a vet and yeah, or, I or really even, believe it saved. Because or even sometimes life. just atmosphere adjustments. Like if you've got an arthritis, arthritic cat, some people have those litter boxes where they jump down and they jump out. An arthritic cat can't do that very well. Or if you've got all the boxes up on the top floor and your cat's arthritic, don't make them go up and down the stairs. So there's a lot of uh, environmental modifications uh, that mm-hmm. can help this as well. But if you don't need, if you don't know, and using the app will help more people know. Yes. Yeah, arthritis is pretty, you know, common. It's not uncommon in cats, but I don't think it's always diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also with environment, it could be even like a change, a new home or new setting or a new family member. We had one cat owner that moved across the country, uh, drove for three days. The first couple of days, she wanted to make sure her cat was okay. Um, took pictures. By the third day, she didn't need the app because the cat was meowing and clawing at the window. <laughs> I'm not happy. Yeah. <laughs> Put the camera down. I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. I did that. Cross country, four and a half days, 17 cats. It was not fun. Yeah. From LA to the Carolinas in a vehicle with 17 cats. I can't even. I. Oh my take my picture not happy i couldn't do it <laughs> it needs to be a movie <laughs> yes well when they're done like kismet has had two dental surgeries so far it's, if he needs another tooth out they're just going to take the other form I'm telling you right now they i'm sure. not going to keep doing this but you know they send him home with a certain number of pain pills and i know from surgeries that i've had sometimes you don't need them before they're gone sometimes you need them after they're gone you're calling the doctor going Ugh. so yeah am i giving this cat a pill that it doesn't need, which is not good for it. Right. Or have we stopped giving the pills and this cat is in pain? How right. inhuman to do this to our animals, you know? And we also <sighs> have uh, the story of Jack the cat. It was a dental issue also. So um, Jack, the, I'll call him Jack for short. He was adopted as an adult cat, mm-hmm. had a broken tooth um, for about a, a, a year and a half. They didn't know that he had pain, but probably at that mark, having him for a year and a half, they, they suspected he did have pain from the tooth because he was losing weight, things like that. Um, The vet did all of these diagnostics, didn't find anything. They switched vets and the new vet thought, you know, maybe we should remove this broken tooth. And the tooth extraction was a risky surgery because if Um, he ripped his stitches out and food got in, it could rot, which could cause a sinus infection, which could lead 
to the brain and be catastrophic. Oh my gosh. So that was, yes. you know, the vet was so concerned about the recovery. He said, bring Jack in, you know, every couple of days, I just want to make sure. And these were pro bono visits. And, um, and this is during COVID too, oh, um, wow. to make sure, but <sighs> you know, that recovery was just, you know, kind of, um, touch and go. And, uh, and our app was used to monitor him and, you know, he, uh, recovered well, but what Good. was in was after his recovery, he started eating more, putting on weight, was a bit piggy as his owner said, <laughs> um, and had a more spring in his step. So mm. he was happy for, you know, two years. Uh, and, and who knew? And so they just thought he was a grumpy cat, but now he's <laughs> a kitten. <laughs> yeah, I bet that nerve yeah. was exposed and it probably was very painful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was reading, I had two teeth that needed to be pulled and I got one done last June, the end of June. And then COVID was so bad. You know, I, I got it in July and was in the hospital for a few days and then my son-in-law. And so I, I don't <laughs> leave the house. Okay. <laughs> you will deliver it to me or it will not come. So I put it off until what, just last month. I think I finally yeah. got it out. I was yeah. in a lot of pain and I was surprised at how much pain after they took it out. You know, I thought a couple of days and I'll be better. No, it was quite a while. And so, yeah, again, then I look at my cat and go, well, another one we've talked about, my son-in-law had diabetes and he had to have his, toes oh, right. and he had terrible ghost pains, terrible ghost pains. And he would, he, he's kind of like a cat. He didn't complain much, but I'd catch this on his face and I'd say, what's going on? It was just my toes. Uh, where there were and I, what's happening feels like there's razor blades on them so this is very common with amputations rita has a three-legged cat I do and she can be a real butthead um she especially can. when it rains yeah and i said i'll bet you that cat has ghost pains i'll bet i'm her sure she does hurts. didn't you feed her photo in and didn't it say she wasn't i happy? did and it was since she was unhappy and it was raining yeah. and that mm -hmm. i know was when it really kicks the bastion off so you know there's all these things how many years have you had Smoochie? Because I know her leg got detached very early I on. I want to say, oh, six, because she's Sonny's sister. Six. Oh, oh, duh. I knew that. So for six years, Rita the cat. I'm sorry. If there's anybody I'm going to trust my cats to, it's Rita. For but I didn't know. Six years, this didn't occur to Rita. Well, no. five years. It was last year. Sebastian got his toes amputated. It never and occurred to me until and that, Sebastian and you said Yes. It. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe this cat just needs a little product to you know microdosing of some kind of pain medication CBD when it's raining or, or yeah yeah it's you know i i know sebastian didn't complain so i know that hurt and it hurt he lived i think a year after that and it was still causing him problems especially mm -hmm. when it rained so and there are a lot of three-legged animals out there and yeah she didn't she didn't know mm -hmm. uh, other than she had a habit of not using the litter box when she <laughs> was in one of her. Yeah. And I, I even have one that's really low to the ground and every now and then she'll just say, no, I'm not using that. I, I it's usually when it's certain. raining, it is usually when it's raining. Hey, yeah. But you would not know that, you know, that would not have occurred to me had I not been there through Sebastian's and then yeah how do you out. know if that is true with cats or not until yes then so then we're feeding pictures and left and right yes <laughs> yes I have used that app a lot and we integrated the two households and I wanted to see how the cats were doing my daughter has a cat that has she's 32 and he has been with her since she was 19 and moved out of the house and he's a jerk Oops. he's just such a cranky jerk he's he's like he reminds me of that old man that's out there going you kids get off my lawn you know that's the cat form that's and, a true grumpy uh, cat uh-huh but he's happy. And, and she took him, it was probably about a year ago. She took him for a vet checkup and he had bad teeth that had to come out. Who knew? I mean, he was pretty much her life partner for years until she married Sebastian. And so well, you and know, now he's back to being since Sebastian yes, passed away. He's back yes, to being her yes, life partner at her comfort. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I love this though, because people, they love their animals. We spend more, especially during COVID, we spend more time with our animals than we spend with our family and in a more intimate way. I mean, they follow us into the bathroom even. Um, so to have a tool that helps us know whether or not these little guys are in pain or need to see the vet or how they're recovering from a procedure, it's just everything in the world. It's just everything. I love this. I'm yeah, I'm obsessed. I like everyone needs this. Everyone get it now. I just download that puppy. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll put links. We'll, we'll put, when yes. we do the write-up, we'll put links in so people can go to Sylvester AI. And so they can go into, uh, 
the Apple store and find the app so they can use it themselves. Um, and I just would, I would love to hear how it progresses, how the rollout goes. And uh, I'm sure you'll have a lot more testimonial cases like Kizzy and like Jack that prove the app is successful and does what you intended. Well, we're looking forward to getting those stories and just all of the use cases that come out that we could have never dreamed of. So it, it's yeah. exciting to see what else and how else this can yeah. help, help people. I, I saw the benefit of it and I thought it was really cool, but until the kismet situation, oh, right. then everything changed. I spoke to the lady from um, Animal Behavior College where I'm taking some courses and she was like, I want this. Can you send this to me? I'm like, gotcha. Right. <laughs> so it's you know people when they hear about it it's it's unprecedented has there ever been anything right. remotely close to this no so Ashna, any last comments you have i have um i think just you know if if you are interested in following along with our journey follow us on social media we have facebook instagram twitter we'll post the the links in the comments um and then yes please please download our app and then give us some feedback we we love 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 to hear stories like kismet so oh, yes well i loved having the story like kismet because it's something that has obviously affected me pretty deeply what more do you want for your family members that you love them for them to be happy and what wouldn't you do for them and to find wouldn't it out be nice and suffering wouldn't it be nice to have this for our children our human children it'd be nice yeah, to i actually that. hear that pretty often people are like when are you making this for babies <laughs> right i'm thinking oh, I they let you lot. know when they're ticked i don't know my kids have never <laughs> been shy about letting me know when they have a problem <laughs> I think if they have a teenager one, I, that I could. Oh, that. yeah. <laughs> if it could decode them, yeah. I will pay anything you ask. I will find a way. Oh, well, yeah. Linda has a teenage six. son, as if you couldn't tell by what she's saying. <laughs> I will pay anything. The girls were worse. If we'd had it with the girls, that would have <laughs> Funny. Well, uh, I, I, I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, for coming on our show, Mish and Sajna and Linda, as always, for being my awesome co-host. And I have to thank Mark Winter, as I do every show, for giving us a platform for 19 Cats and Counting on Pet Life Radio. And he does such an awesome job at editing our shows as well. Um, so until next time, you know what we say. Every, every day, day is, is, is cat day. day. Thanks, ladies. Thank you so much for having us. We appreciate it. Bless you, Linda. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I was trying to hold it off. And it oh. didn't like, it's going to well, escape. It'll be interesting <laughs> to see if Mark leaves it in or edit it. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.